Hi there, and welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 325. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from a rainy Alpharetta, Georgia tonight. Today is Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. If you're watching us live, say hello and where you're watching from. And hello to my replay, replay warriors. Thanks for catching us on replay. Uh, let's see, I've got two projects for you tonight, a fun fold and a really cute treat box for you. I'm excited to show you those. They're using the Countryside Corners Designer Series paper. And right before I went live, I double checked that the stamp sets I used were still in stock. And of course, one of them is already sold out from the last chance list, such is life. Uh, you'll be able to use any stamp set you have in your stash for the project. So quick sneak peek. Here we go. Here is the fun fold card. I love these cards. I opened it from the wrong side. This is the um, angled trifold card. Um, Martha, if you're watching, she asked me to try to pixify this. It took me a while to figure it out with something that I was happy with. So I'm excited to show you how to create this. And then I want to give a shout out to Liz Hightower, her inspiration from one of the swaps I received from her. I decided to recreate it. She did share her measurements with me. I pixified them just a little bit, but inside this little mini survival kit is a pack of Tic Tacs and a Chap Ice lip balm. So I'm excited to show you those tonight. Thank you guys for joining me live. Hi, Jen, hello. All right, let's see, what do I have for you? If you've got questions for me tonight, just put a Q in front of your question that will make it into my Q when I do tonight's live q and I'm gonna save all of your questions till the end of tonight's live stream so that I can focus on demonstrating the projects for you from start to finish, and then I'll stay on until I answer all of your questions. Please do save that cue for actual questions for me, that way I can get through everybody's questions. Uh, when you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. All you need to do is use my magic shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto-magically take you to the Stampin' Up! online store, shopping with me as your demonstrator, and have my current host code already added to your order. If your order is totaling $150 or more before shipping and taxes, you're gonna to wanna to take that host code off because you're gonna earn Stampin' Rewards from Stampin' Up to spend to get some free product. You'll also still earn Pixie Perks from me on orders of $150 or more. We have so much going on right now, so I'm going to flip my camera here for a second just to talk about a couple of things. We are in the midst of the last chance sale. And that started, or I should say last chance, we kind of announced what the last chance stuff was um, a couple weeks ago, but uh, yesterday the discounts went into effect. That started at midnight mountain time yesterday morning. Products are already selling out, obviously. This stamp set that I love is already sold out because it was 50% off. Um, that disappeared rather quickly. I didn't even think about it. Uh, but I did share some lists in the video description of my live stream from two weeks ago. It might have been three weeks ago. Now I don't even remember. But look back in the history of my live streams if you want to grab these downloads. You've got the two last chance lists from the annual catalog and the mini catalog. I also created some um, additional downloads just so you knew what was carrying over to online exclusives, which bundles are going away, um, both the products in them as well as the bundles themselves. So those entire bundles going away. Uh, bundles that are, or products that are staying, but the bundle pricing is going away. These are some of my favorites that are going away. This whole bottom row is already sold out. Those in colors that are outgoing, those usually sell out quickly. And then we do have some price increases that are coming on over 90 products, I believe. Uh, but these are kind of my favorites. So those are just some downloads I shared a few weeks ago. Um, let's see, we were not live last week because it was spring break for the kids. So we had a really nice spring break staycation. It did give me an opportunity to figure out my product shares. So those are now open for registration. I do this with every catalog launch and you'll find a link in the description to my product share signup page. 
For the annual catalog, I'm offering paper, ribbon, or both paper and ribbon. Um, the only difference with my paper share this go around is I am including all of the color family and in color designer series papers. I typically haven't included those in the past. I opted to include those instead of the specialty papers. Um, so that's the only difference with that, but it's 180 sheets of six by six designer series paper that you'll get in the paper share. There are technically nine ribbons. One of them is a combo pack. So it's got two ribbons in it. Um, you get approximately 20 yards of ribbon. And if you want to choose both, you get a choice of a free gift and that's all on the sign up form. The deadline for sign up is April 28th. I also have launched my in color club. I do this once per year when the new in colors are launched. It's a really fun way to build your in color stash over a period of five months from May through September. You can get all those details at my in color club page. Both of those are linked in the description. Also sign up deadline for that is April 29th as, or April 28th as well. And then if you've purchased my Stampin' Blends labels in the past, you should have received an email on Friday, March 29th, letting you know they've been updated. I have added all of the five new in colors. I've had a few of you asking me about Basic Beige. Basic Beige does not come in Stampin' Blends, so Basic Beige is not included. But this download, which is $8, and I think I have it linked in the description. If I don't, I'll make sure to add it, but I'm pretty sure I added it. It's $8, it's a one-time purchase, and you get free updates for as long as Stampin' Blends are a current product. So. Uh, your one-time purchase comes with all free updates, but this includes all past and present and coming <laughs> Stampin' Blends. So um, that is all updated and ready to go as well. So those are those big updates there. I think those are the only updates I have. Um, why don't we go ahead and jump into tonight's projects? I'm gonna start with our little 3D project today. And it is tiny, but I love it so much. So here's a sneak peek at it again. And this is basically a remake of a project I shared back in 20, I don't even remember now. <laughs> it would have been before New Orleans, because I took a bunch of those. Anyways, it was a chocolate and chapstick treat box. The difference was the inside had one chap ice and two Hershey's nuggets on either side. And Liz Hightower giving her a shout out and all the credit for this because she took that box and Lizified it to create this for a swap that she gave me in Houston. I fell in love with it. She did send me her measurements. Liz, thank you so much. I tweaked them just slightly. I pixie-fied a pixie project. Is that even a real thing? Anyways, I thought that was so cute with the mints and the chap ice in there. I've got both of these linked, my Amazon links in the description as well, if you're interested in purchasing those. But it's such a cute little thank you gift. I'm kind of calling it my chapstick or chap ice and Tic Tac survival kit because I thought that's such a really cute thing. Who wouldn't love chapstick and mints? or lip balm and mints. So um, we're gonna go ahead and jump into this. There is a project sheet linked in the description. I didn't grab the QR code. I always forget to put that up for you guys anyways, but the link is in the description to the project sheet for this. So get my pieces and parts here. We are gonna start with a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock and this measures four and three quarters by five inches. And I wanna make sure I've got my measurements by me. Put those right there. I'm gonna bring in the Simply Scored and we're gonna start with the four and three quarter inch side along the top. So four and three quarter inches. Oh good, is Liz here maybe? Did you see Liz in the chat? <laughs> Um, we're gonna go ahead and score along the four and three quarter inch side at three quarters and one and a half from each side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate it and we're going to do three quarters and one and a half, okay? And then I'm gonna turn this a quarter of a turn to the five inch side and we're gonna score this at three quarters and two and one eighth from each side. I'm gonna rotate it to the opposite side. Again, three quarters and two and one eighth. 
So we're going to have sort of that grid. Okay. So you see there's a little bit of the rectangle there. That again is the four and three quarter inch side. We're just going to be paying attention to that orientation here. Okay. Yay, Liz is here. I hope most of you, at least in the US, were able to see a little bit of the eclipse. We were at about 80%, not in the path of totality, but it was fun because the kids got to see a little bit of it um, at school. And then right as they get off the bus, it was peak for us here in the Atlanta area. So we had fun checking that out together. I am just folding and burnishing on all the score lines like so. All right. Here is my template here for reference. This is also included on the project sheet. Here's what the project sheet looks like. You get a reference of the template, picture of what the project looks like, and a QR code that'll bring you right back to this video. Once the video is over, I will actually add chapters and things so you can jump around as needed on replay. All right, I'm gonna actually turn my cardstock to the five inch side, okay? And it really doesn't matter where I start, but I'm gonna cut up three of the four vertical score lines stopping at the second horizontal score line. So, and I just cut right down the middle, but again, we're gonna go up to that second horizontal score line on three of these all next to each other. That will kind of define where the top is versus the bottom of the box. And it doesn't matter because it's the same right to left. So we've done that. I'm going to turn it a quarter of a turn and we're actually going to remove this, all these four sections here. So we're focused right there. Okay. And for this, I like to go just inside the score line. This just helps the lid tuck into the box nicely. We're going to remove those four sections in the corner. Then I like to kind of fold this section out of the way. We're going back this way here. And I'm going to cut into the second square here. Now you'll see I've got about an eighth of an inch that I'm cutting into this three quarter inch square. And that's just because I don't want those tabs to overlap. So I'm just eyeballing it, just coming in an extra eighth of an inch from the score line. You'll see that's left here on the piece we cut away. And then I'm just gonna come in and miter cut on the tabs. I was hearing so many funny stories from the noises people heard when it was dark during those of you that are in the path of totality and all the living things were so confused for a brief four minutes, right? And then I'm just coming in and also miter cutting on this outside section as well. So this one right here. And that just allows that to tuck into the box. So we're gonna repeat exactly what we did on the right side to the left side. So we're gonna turn it this way. And now we wanna make sure that we're cutting up the same vertical score line. So just opposite as we did on this side. So I'm gonna come in from the right and cut up those first three Vertical score lines stopping at the second horizontal score line. Like that, turning it a quarter of a turn here. We're gonna remove these four sections here. Again, I'm coming just inside the score line to cut away that score line, like so, okay? Now fold this guy out of the way because we don't wanna cut into him. We're gonna then on these, I keep switching this around to you, but these tabs here, again, we're gonna come in about an eighth of an inch inside that score line, like so. So again, leaving about an eighth of an inch behind when we cut out the outside one and a little bit into the next one. Then, welcome, Gail. If you do wanna participate in the chat, you just have to log into your Google account or your YouTube account. If you've got Gmail, that's the easiest way to log in, but then you can join us in the chat. And if you're new here, let us know. My amazing audience will give you a big warm welcome. I can't always see all your messages, but I do read them all after the live stream. All right, so we've miter cut those two tabs and I'm just gonna come in and do a quick little miter cut on this outside section here, like so. There 
we go. Okay. Now I'm going to come in with a couple of punches. These, of course, are retired, but they're super handy. A little half inch circle punch and a corner rounder punch. So we're going to round the corners of this top section here. That just gives uh, a nice finish to the tab that tucks into the box. Like so. Okay. And then on this section, which this is going to end up being the front of the box here, we want to add a little finger notch. So I do like a little half inch punch for this. I'm going to come in, I don't know, about a third of the way just to have a little bit of a finger notch so that the recipient can get that open. Okay. All right. So we are now looking good. And I forgot to add the little finger notch. I got to add that to the template. <laughs> I will do that. I will also add the supplies list after the stream, but one thing I just couldn't get that done. So, all right, I've got a couple of pieces of paper here. First, we're going to use basic white, and this measures one and a quarter by one and five eighths. That's going to go here on the top of our lid. And then we've got a piece that measures one and one eighth by one and a half of that countryside. Is that what it's called? Countryside something, countryside floral. <laughs> Just, I'm looking at Brian. Oh, countryside in um, designer series paper. So again, that was one and one eighth by one and a half. All right, so we do want to make sure this one's kind of directional, um, but we're going to layer these two together. So we've got that nice white border. I know I had my glue behind me. We're going to layer those two together. It's easier to uh, adhere these panels before we put the box together. There we go. Got about a sixteenth of an inch of that basic white peeking out from behind. It really makes this pattern pop, especially on the Knight of Navy here. All right, and then I'm just going to layer that. Now, just to pay attention, if you do have a directional one, you're going to want your cardstock or your template kind of in, or I should say your box in this orientation because when the box goes together, that's how it's going to go together. So just pay attention if you've got a directional pattern. And if directional, you're going to want to make sure that's cut into landscape. Okay. All right, so now we can start to glue this together. We're going to start tab by tab. So I'm just going to do liquid glue starting on the first tab. And we're going to line up this score line with this cut edge to form our first box corner here. And I love the liquid glue for this because then I can just slide things right into place and make sure that's all lined up really nicely. See that? And then I'm just pinching kind of on the outside and the inside until that adhesive adheres. Is that the right way to say it? Adhesive adheres. <laughs> Feels like it's double. And then we'll just work our way around to the other tabs. In case you're new here and you're wondering who I'm talking to, my husband is right next to me. He's watching the chat watching I should say you're kind of moderating he's not he's not watching it like you all are in trouble he's just he's there to help if we need links or grabbing questions if you forget to put the cue so and again just working my way around I usually wait to move on to the next tab until I can tell that that tab is staying put. Or I can tell the tab I'm working on is staying put. And I realized I just forgot to cut a piece of paper. Oh, I thought I was doing so good. We're going to cut the piece for the inside divider. All right, so I don't know if you can see this, but you can those tabs, let's see if I can get some light in there. No, nope. well, a little bit there. So those tabs aren't overlapping because we trimmed off about that eighth of an inch. 
So um, now we're gonna put liquid glue. You could use tear and tape as well if you prefer. Uh, liquid glue works just fine. So I'm just gonna start with one side here. Put liquid glue and we're gonna just fold that right into the box. And I'm gonna pinch until it feels like it sticks. Tear and tape's a little bit faster for this part if you like to do tear and tape. Um, you know me and my liquid glue, I love it. And then I like to just come in with the bone folder and just smooth that all out. And then we'll do the other tab and fold that guy in. Ooh, good questions. All right. There we go. So now the basics of our box are good to go. So that's gonna tuck in. You've got the little finger notch here, but let's go ahead and build our little divider. I say build, it's actually really easy to do, but let me go ahead and get some Knight of Navy and we'll cut that piece. All right, so we're gonna cut a piece that measures one and a quarter by two and seven eighths. So one and a quarter, I'm measuring here on the right side of the cutting groove. One and a quarter by two and seven eighths. So not too big. Again, one and a quarter, two and seven eighths. And then I'll bring in the Simply Scored. I just love the Simply Scored. Some of you are probably like, why don't you just use the trimmer? I feel like this gives me more accuracy. So we're gonna actually do a little bit of like mountain valley folds here. So the first score line I'm gonna do is at one and three eighths. And then I'm gonna flip to the back side. So we're doing this on the long side, obviously. So I did one and three eighths on one side of the cardstock. Now on the back side, we're gonna go to three quarters and two. So three quarters and two, okay? So now we've got three score lines on here, but you can see the middle one is a valley and the outside ones are mountain score lines. I'm gonna turn that middle one into a mountain. So it started as a valley, turning it into a mountain. Ding, that was my, my magnetic bowl that I'm making sure is there so I don't lose my dies again. And then these two, I'm gonna fold, well, I'm gonna turn them into valley folds. I'll show you what the profile looks like. Like so, or you could look at it this way, a W or an M, however way you look at it, okay? So I'm gonna use liquid glue, use tear and tape as well. I'm just gonna glue these two middle sections together. I'm just gonna pinch right on that middle score line until that glue adheres. So give that just a few moments. Come in and burnish just to move, smooth that out. And then what we have is something that looks like this. And that's gonna be our little divider for the inside of our mini survival kit. So that's just gonna sit right in there, okay? And then, I forgot to grab ingredients, hold on. We've done these um, a couple, like a month or so ago, I think I had a project for these, but these are those little mini Tic Tac Travels boxes. I'm gonna grab, hmm, let's do orange. Do an orange one. I still have a stash of the chap ices. We'll stick with the orange theme. Again, both of these are linked in the description if you've not seen them before. And so this will, and it depends on, you can flip this around if you'd rather do it in a different orientation, but we're gonna have the chap ice there on the left and the orange Tic Tacs on the right. How cute is that? Oh, I love it. Liz, thank you so much for tweaking my original idea for this. I love the mints and lip balm together. Super cute for a little mini survival kit. Now, we're gonna just do one more thing. I have die cut using basic white um, from the Give It A Whirl dies. 
I don't know if these are still in stock, but they are on the retired list. Uh, I think they are anyways. Man, <laughs> I can't remember. Spring break brain, apparently. And all we did was a staycation, but I'm like, Psh, can't keep it all straight. So this little heart, which I love. I've actually done this combination before with this heart and the sentiment that we're gonna use. And that's from the best family ever. And I absolutely love the font in the stamp set. And we're gonna use the word thanks. So I've already die cut it to save some time. So we're gonna use Knight of Navy ink. And photopolymer is great for uh, if you've die cut ahead of time, because now I can see where I'm stamping. There we go. Love that thanks on that little heart. All right, so we're gonna do kind of a combo of dimensionals here. So a regular size, and then I'm gonna do two minis. Or you could just chop up some regular size. And just lay it out like that. Kind of looks like a teddy bear face to me. Oh. There we go. And then I'm just gonna center this guy. Right there on the top. And we're gonna add one more thing. trying to use up I had I have too many of these so I they don't all fit in my storage so I'm using up the ones that aren't in the storage and we're gonna pick up one of the larger iridescent pearls basic jewels and I'm gonna pop that right down the point of that heart to finish off this adorable little mini survival kit with a mini chap ice and mini tic tacs mini all around so there we go Super cute. Um, again, there's the sample and there's the one we created together tonight. You can find the project sheet for this linked in the description. And we're gonna go ahead and transition to this fun, fun fold for you. Um, I'm excited to show you how I figured out how to take the guesswork away from the angles. So we'll talk about that more when we get to it. So here is the fun fold card we're creating. It's an angled trifold card. And if you can hear that, do it by the microphone, it's a magnet. So I'll show you how I added the magnets there. I absolutely love magnets from Total Element. They are also linked in the description. I've got a coupon code for you as well um, for 10% off. Uh, the link that I've included goes directly to the magnet size that I like, and we'll talk about that when we get to that point. But have you guys given these angled trifold cards a try? Uh, the challenge with these, they I love the way that these look. Uh, the challenge can be this angle of your designer series paper layers. So I have figured out a way to make that really easy. Um, so hopefully you will give this a try if you haven't yet had the guts to do so, but it is actually e way easier than it looks. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're gonna start with a piece of Knight of Navy. And this piece measures five and a half by 11. There's not a project sheet for this. You'll have to wait till it goes to the blog post, but I'll have all the uh, measurements and such for you on the blog post. So I do have a blog post. I'm gonna try to get published tomorrow from my last live stream. And then my plan is for this to publish on Friday at thepaperpixie.com. All right, so with the five and a half by 11 piece, we are going to score this along the long side or the 11 inch side at three and three eighths from each side. So three and three eighths and three and three eighths. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it to the short side and I'm going to use the ball tip of my stylus and I'm going to make a little mark at one inch like so. Now, what I like to do to try to keep this as accurate as I can, because accuracy helps with these angles, I'm gonna flip and do one inch again. You could use pencil for this if you prefer, but so now you can see the two uh, one inch marks, okay? 
And then I'm gonna turn it to the opposite short side and again, one inch. And I'm literally just pressing right there at the top of my Simply Scored to leave a little indentation there, flipping it and doing it again. So essentially what we're doing is marking one inch from each edge along the five and a half inch side. Okay, so you've got those kind of four tick marks there. Now we're gonna bring in the paper trimmer and we are going to cut from the tick mark on the angle to the score line. So that's kind of our starting and stopping point. And what I like to do is, I'm gonna make sure this shows up in the screen here. I'm gonna line up that little tick mark. Let me see if I can bring, zoom this in just a wee bit. So I've got the tick mark, oops, tick mark is right there. I'm gonna line that up in the cutting groove and I like to place my finger there so then I can pivot the rest of this. So I'm gonna pivot to where the score line, where the score line meets the edge, that's where I'm lining up in the cutting groove at the top. So we've got our um, one inch little tick mark here and the score line up here, both in the cutting groove. You wanna make sure you're holding everything in place and I like to cut from the tick mark to the score line. So we're removing this angle here. What's the question? Is that what I was talking about? <clears throat> the mini Tic Tac milk carton? Yeah. And then there's, I don't know if anybody asked about the other chocolate and chapstick box too. Uh, so we've cut it like so. Okay, and we're just gonna repeat that on all sides. Let's do, I'm gonna kind of flip this around. So again, get that score line lined up. Whichever one you start with, just press your finger there and then pivot. And then at the top here, we're lining up that little tick mark. And again, I like to cut from the tick mark to the score line to remove that section there. And I'm just working my way around. Tick mark, oops, as I'm off the screen here. Tick mark to score line. All right, and then cut like that. And then finally, the last one, same spiel, right? Tick mark to the score line. And just take your time. Once you get one side, if you pivot, it makes it a lot easier. And then we're gonna cut. Okay, so let me zoom back out here. Now we've got a piece that looks like this. Okay, so here is the trick. And I actually think this way is a lot easier, but it's the, it's how we can get the angle correct. Now, I am, as if you've known me for a while, I love numbers and I love accuracy. <laughs> and so I kind of worked up this fun fold card in Adobe Illustrator just to figure out if there was like a mathematical equation that works to get the right angle on the inset designer series paper layer. And there really isn't um, just because if I could get one measurement to an imperial measurement, you know, like a one eighth or a quarter or something that we can recognize, the other measurement was something I couldn't even describe as some wacky fraction. So geometry, right? So um, we're just gonna actually use our angles here and make some pencil marks, the angles that we've already created to come up with the angles for the designer series paper. So I have cut two pieces of designer series paper here that measures, the height here is five and five sixteenths. Okay, that is one sixteenth more than five and a quarter. If you wanna cut it to five and a quarter, that is fine. You're just gonna have a little bit more of a border here of the Knight of Navy. So five and five sixteenths seem to work the best. Five and five sixteenths by three and one eighth. And I've got two pieces of designer series paper that measure the same and you'll notice this is directional. So these are in portrait. So the direction runs from top to bottom, okay? As opposed to left to right. So this where we've got our valley score lines is the front of our card. We're actually gonna flip this over, 
okay? Because I'm also gonna flip my designer series paper over as well. So we just wanna pay attention here. This is where we want the designer series paper panel to go, but I'm gonna flip it over like this because we're gonna make a pencil mark along the back. Now, a couple of tricks here. You can use your paper trimmer, your Simply Scored, uh, maybe your stamp positioning tool. You want something that has a right angle. So I'm gonna show you on both the paper trimmer and the Simply Score, just so you can see how it works on both. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm kind of keeping this in the right orientation. I'm gonna line up that piece of designer series paper right up, let me take this off so I can make sure I'm showing you the right thing, right into that right angle corner, okay? Then I'm gonna take my card base and I'm lining up that left edge, the left flat edge and the top flat edge. So see how we've got this angle here? You just wanna make sure everything is up tidy into the flat edges in the corner, okay? Then I'm just gonna grab a pencil and I'm just gonna draw this angle. Now, we don't have to worry about this because it's the back side of the designer series paper. Okay, so we've left that pencil mark here See that pencil mark? All right, so now, because this is kind of a little bit of a wonky corner, I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn to do the next angle. This time we're gonna go ahead and line up our paper here in landscape, and then our cardstock right over it. Again, paying attention that that flat edge on the top and the flat edge on the left are all pushed up into the paper trimmer has um, raised edges. And actually, I told you I was gonna do this on the um, Simply Scored. I will demonstrate it, but we're just gonna do our pencil marks here while we're on the uh, paper trimmer. So then I'm just gonna take my pencil again, and I am holding everything into place, but I'm literally running my pencil tip right along that edge. So then what we end up with are pencil marks that are the exact right angle, or the exact correct angle, not a right angle, <laughs> okay? So let me show you and we only need to do that to one piece because now we can line up the other two pieces, we can line up the two pieces together and cut them at the same time. Let me show you how that would look on the Simply Scored. Same kind of thing, but you're using that sort of right angle corner. You're gonna put your designer series paper there and then press up your cardstock, again, lining up the straight edges along the left and the top, and then you would draw your pencil mark. Okay, same thing, turn it a quarter of a turn. Lining up those flat edges, draw your pencil mark. Okay, so you can do it with either, and same thing with the, a stamp positioning tool like the Misty or the Stamparatus, you can do the same thing as well. You have to be a little strategic because this is kind of a larger piece, which way you turn that, but I found it easiest to have my right corner up here on the left, okay? So, Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put the card base out of the way. And this is the one that we've got our pencil marks on. I'm gonna flip it over just to pay attention to the orientation of the paper, top to bottom. It really doesn't matter because we've got our pencil marks there, but I'm gonna take the other one, making sure it's in the same orientation, but I'm gonna sandwich or have those two pattern sides facing each other. They're both going in the same direction if you have directional. I'm gonna face those together, okay? And I'm just gonna stack them using a flat surface to do so, making sure they're kind of held together. I'm gonna line up that pencil line in the cutting groove. And it's easier than you might think because it is a straight line. I'm making sure that that's lined up top to bottom. Let me see if I can zoom in if you can see that pencil mark any better. Yeah. So pencil mark here. Again, I'm right in the middle of the cutting groove and then I'm gonna cut. So we just cut that off. We did two pieces at once. Okay, I'm gonna turn it, making sure this is still all lined up and we'll line up the other pencil mark in the cutting groove. I just go back and forth because we've got two layers of paper, but it usually cuts through on the first cut. So we just remove that, okay? Now, the magic. All 
Flipping to the right side of this, which is where those score lines are valley score lines. I'm gonna show you when we flip, that's backwards, let's do it that way. When we flip our paper here, the angles are perfect and we've got that eighth of an inch of a border perfectly lined up. Yay, I loved being able to figure that out. So um, I always hesitated to do these types of cards because the angle being just slightly off although always bothered me. <laughs> so hopefully that will help you with these really cool angled fun folds. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is actually adhere our magnets first because I'm gonna hide those between the designer series paper and the cardstock. So let me show you how to do that. First, we're gonna go ahead and fold and burnish on our score lines on the card base. And again, I'm turning those valley score lines into mountain folds. I like to score on the back just because it does leave a little bit of a shiny edge like so, okay? So that's kind of the orientation of how that's gonna close. If you want it to close left first and then the right over the top, totally up to you, but I typically always have my cards open from the right to the left. So let me grab my magnets. They're tiny, tiny, and believe it or not, there is two of them on here. Again, I purchased mine from Total Element. I don't remember their price the last time I checked. I wanna say it's around $14.99, I believe free shipping, and you get 200 magnets. These are the, uh, I can't remember the measurement. It's quarter inch by 1 32nd of an inch, I think. Um, but that's linked in the description. Make sure you use the coupon code PAPERPIXIE to get 10% off. And I'm gonna separate these. So one here, one there. Hopefully we're not sticking to anything. And I'm gonna grab my glue dots. I'm gonna start by picking up the first one. So I just stick it right to the glue dot roll and then use my take your pick tool to pick that off the roll, okay? And again, that's the orientation I want that to close. And I'm gonna place this in the center, but I'm over about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch. Nobody's gonna see it. But I want a little bit of space to the edge so that I have enough room for the designer series paper to adhere all the way around that magnet. Now, the trick to line up the other one before we put the designer series paper down is I'm just gonna open this and drop the other magnet right there. And it's gonna line up the proper, oops, the proper positive and negative. Okay, then I don't have to worry about that. I know that those are lined up properly. So we got one on the front, which is stuck with a glue dot, and this one is just stuck by a magnetic force right now. So I'm gonna pick up another glue dot and place it right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and then just close my card. And what's gonna happen is that magnet's gonna stick to the other side and it's perfectly lined up. See how it's holding itself together? So now we can come in and adhere our designer series paper. So what I like to do is kind of open my card like so. And then we're gonna take our panels. Now remember, this was the left side. So if we've got directional paper, we want our direction to be going this way, top to bottom. And I'm gonna use liquid glue Gonna do the outside edge, and then I'm also gonna do glue in the center, just so that we've got adhesive that can go all the way around that magnet. And then we'll just line that up. Those beautifully lined up angles. And now I'm just gonna kinda take my time and make sure all that designer series paper is adhering around the magnet. You guys are awesome. I know you guys are talking about shipping in the chat. I haven't watched all of the chat, but I can tell you firsthand, being a business owner who ships a lot of things, shipping is not cheap. Um, 
For me to ship a catalog alone, it's up to $7 just to ship a catalog. So if you can imagine shipping some of our amazing crafting supplies, I think if they were to reduce shipping, we would just see it in the prices. So I'm still grateful that Stampin' Up! is a strong business and I understand that shipping costs are crazy. It's just the way of the world these days. And I don't think anybody can compete with Amazon, unfortunately. Uh, I wish. I wish I could offer free shipping. All right. Now we're going to do the same t thing on the other one. Covering up that magnet. Now I do love to cover up the magnets just for safety purposes. And do use magnets to your discretion, especially on cards. Um, you know, if you know the recipient, I know that there is caution if anybody has a pacemaker. So just keep that in mind. There are a number of ways you can close this card. You could do a belly band. You could put a little ribbon hole um, to tie a ribbon around it. Um, a number of different ways, but I thought I'd show you something different with the magnet. And I'm just making sure that that's adhered around the designer series paper. So now our magnets are totally hidden and our card actually stays closed because those guys are super strong. They're rare earth magnets. For the inside of my angled trifold card, I just have a basic layer that is five and a quarter by four inches. Go ahead and adhere this down. Love it, Carol. I'm the same way. When I see something that I absolutely love, I almost drop everything to try it. <laughs> the struggle is real in paper crafting, isn't it? It is the best compliment when you guys make my project, so I appreciate it. All right, so there we go. And then I opted to do a really simple greeting on the front, but a bold one. Um, unfortunately, it sold out. So you can use your, <laughs> use what you have in your stash. This is the Love For You stamp set and want want. It was 50% off. I should have known, but it sold out. So I'm just using this big sentiment, so much love. And some of my favorite dies. You guys see these often here on the channel, but the stylish shapes dies. And I used the largest circle and the diameter on this one. I just have to show you this. My favorite ruler is sticking to my magnet wand. <laughs> I got magnets everywhere today. Um, the diameter on this guy is three inches. Okay, so it's the largest circle in the stylish shapes. But I felt like a circle balanced this card out. Um, so I've already die cut the piece, which it would help if I grabbed that piece. Here we go. All right. Ink up so much love. Make sure I've got good coverage there. I don't have any inside info, but I think this month last year we had a free shipping day. So I'm hopeful we may see another one this month, but I don't have any information. They usually tell us like right before it happens. So I'll keep you posted if I hear anything. There we go. So much love. I love that bold sentiment. So look in your sash and see what kind of fun, bold sentiments you have for this card. But I just thought that was so cute right there on the front. And I'm having it a little bit off to the left. Um, I loved the way that that looked kind of centered in this left panel. All right, we're going to have some fun with dimensionals because I love, <laughs> I love to use them. I'm going to say a brand new piece. I'm going to do, I think that's dry. One in the middle and then five around it. So a total of six. That's not too many, is it? <laughs> I don't want any droopy sentiments on our cards, do we? All right. I'm going to place this guy 
top to bottom, left to right, centered on that Countryside in Designer Series paper, like that, okay? And that also kind of hides the bump. There's just a little bit of a bump from the magnet. You can't even really see it, but it hides the one on the front, so you wouldn't really know it's there. Your recipient is probably gonna look at this card and be like, what is, how is it doing that? <laughs> um, I could sit here and listen to magnets stick together all day. It's one of, one of my most satisfying sounds. Mm, let's, I'm gonna do it in the same spot. <laughs> right there, kind of centering that. Uh, in case you're wondering, I'm using the putty tip of the Take Your Pick tool. It's my favorite one for picking up embellishments. So there we have our angled trifold card. Hopefully I have taken the mystery out of those angles for you and you'll give this a try. So wait for this to post to my blog. I have all the measurements for you. They're real easy um, and it's really easy to put together. So I hope you have fun making an angled trifold card. So just to recap, there's that guy and this guy. So angled trifold card and our chapstick or chap ice and Tic Tac mini survival kit. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and tee up questions here. If you do have a question for me, make sure to put a Q in front of your question. And while I'm doing that, if you haven't hit the little thumbs up icon beneath the video, why don't you go ahead and do that? That helps us here on YouTube. And if you're new here and you're not yet a subscriber, you can subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we're live. I do want to give a shout out to my Pixie patrons. I forgot to do that at the beginning, but you'll notice they have the little magic wand icon next to their names. Grateful for their support. All right. Questions. Let's see. Terry's up first. Where did you find the chap ice and tiny Tic Tac? So those are from Amazon. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can find those linked in the description um, to where I purchased them or the um, the links that I purchased. I've got mascara on my on my face today. Um, the links that I've used to purchase them for myself. So those are linked in the description. They are affiliate links, but Amazon is where I found those. Um, the I, there used to be a much bigger box of the chap ice. That looks like it's been out of stock for a while. So I included just, it's still kind of like a display box, but I know you won't be able to stop making these. And I don't know if Brian had shared it in the chat yet, but the chocolate and chap ice, anybody asked for that link yet? Okay. Um, I do have a chocolate and chap ice project as well. Um, so that's another option if you want to add something different to use the chap ice. Chap ice seems to be one of the... Um, not quite as popular as the gift card question, but will a chap ice fit? <laughs> that's one of the frequent questions I get. Yes, that's the one. Brian, uh, I almost said Greg. Brian, I said, but, gr <laughs> Brian's going to pop the link in the chat to my original project, the chocolate and chap ice. Um, that's sort of complementary to tonight's project. Uh, paper shares are open to anybody. So I do have quite a few demonstrators that participate as well. Um, product shares are just a great way to get a sampling of new products. Um, so you don't have to purchase all of the papers in their full size. So yeah, open to uh, demonstrators and customers alike. And if you're another demonstrator's customer, but your demonstrator doesn't offer paper shares, you're welcome to participate in mine as well. That doesn't mean you need to move to me as a demonstrator. I do get that question a lot as well. So Delightful Floral. Um, so Delightful Floral has always been an online exclusive, Jen. Um, so my guess is if it uh, is no longer in the online store, then my understanding is with online exclusives, when they disappear from the online store, they're gone for good. Um, demonstrators can't necessarily confirm that because they don't put it on the inventory status report. The online exclusives are kind of a whole new category in and of itself. Um, Stampin' Up! actually has to manually update the inventory status report. And so with the new online exclusive products, when they're gone, they're gone. So if they're going to be restocked, they would still be in the online store, but they would say currently unavailable. Uh, but if you don't see Delightful Floral there anymore, and I don't think I've, I've... In the back of my head, I'm remembering some discussion about Delightful Floral, but if it's not in the online store, I'm pretty sure that means it's gone for good, unfortunately. <laughs> If it's still a secret, just blink once. I can talk about the products that are in the catalog. I just can't show you the, 
the inside pages, but uh, Delightful Floral is not in the catalog. It was gonna be, remain an online exclusive. So if you don't see it, I think it's gone. Let's see, has the amount of sheets in cardstock in each individual color pack decreased? In the 2023 catalog, you get 24 sheets per pack. In the 2024 catalog, it says 20 sheets. So let me clarify that. Um, it did not change for the solid colors. That still remains 24 sheets. And I'm gonna double check that as I say that. I can't show you the inside. <laughs> um, Yeah, the, that has not changed, although you, it's confusing in the catalog. So the eight and a half by 11 single color packs remain at 24 sheets. Where you're seeing the 20 sheets, that is the color family pack. So it's the assortment where you get two of each of 10 colors. It's the same thing for the in colors, but you get four each of the five in colors. So the assortment packs are 20 sheets but the single color packs are still 24 sheets. Hopefully that answers your question. So Eloise, we just got the catalogs last night. My amazing UPS driver, Doug, dropped off many boxes on the porch. I spent most of the day today labeling them and packaging them. So the goal is that we're gonna, I'm gonna try to get them to the post office tomorrow. So when I ship your catalog, you will get an email with your tracking link. So tomorrow is the plan. So hopefully you should have your catalog um, early next week from me, okay? Are the tiny boxes your favorite? Um, yes and no, it all depends. Um, Yes, <laughs> I do love the tiny projects, mostly because they're just such a great thing to throw into your handbag, um, to have ready to give to people. I also love giving little tiny ones as swaps. Um, just something different. It's fun for me to teach. And any of these can be adapted um, to be a larger size as well by changing the measurements. So the QR code, Sandra, all you actually do is use the camera on your smartphone. So if you open up the, you know, if you were about to take a picture, um, go ahead and hold your um, camera app over that QR co code and you should see a little pop-up. Um, it'll look different depending on whether you're on Android or iOS. Um, so either a Google, what do they call it? Google phone or an Apple phone. I'm an Apple user. <laughs> So Android or iOS, you have a little bit of a different pop-up that pops up, but it should, it should read the QR code and then pop up with a hyperlink that you can click on. And that will take you to wherever that QR code is linked to. But yeah, the camera app. Back in the day, you used to have a, you used to have to have a QR code app specifically to read QR codes, but now you can just use your camera on your smartphone. This is a good one. I'm gonna pop this one up even though there's no cue. Um, I don't have severely dry hands because I'm working with paper, mostly because I will put lotion on. You hand me my lotion bottle. <laughs> Cause I saw this was some chat or this was some discussion in the chat. So I use this everyone nourishing lotion. I don't love fragrances. Um, so this is the unscented one, but, and I think I have this linked on my favorites page. This one keeps my hands moisturized, um, not greasy. So I don't get the little fingerprints on my cardstock. I should be better about putting this on throughout the day. Honestly, my hands are drier because of washing my hands than they are from working with paper. But um, if you are having dry hands because of working with paper a lot, try using a lotion that's non-greasy um, before you start creating with paper. Obviously, the paper is gonna absorb some of the moisture out of your hands because that's what it does, um, but try that. Okay, so directional, let's see if I can explain this. Um, it's always hard to, I sometimes put it into words differently. So directional really means if you've got a pattern of paper similar to this one where you see that the bird's heads are all going in the same direction. This is a, this piece itself is a portrait piece, meaning the top is shorter than the side, okay? And the direction on this goes from top to bottom. So when I say directional, it's if you've got a pattern of paper where 
your paper looks different if you turn it sideways. So we wouldn't want to put the paper on our card in this direction because then all the birds would be leaning to the left or the right, right? So because it's, I call it directional because there is one way that the paper goes where the pattern is right side up. Did I explain that okay? <laughs> it's hard to describe, but hopefully that makes a little bit more sense for you, Denise. Directional just means that if you turn your paper pattern sideways, and things are going sideways, that's a directional paper. But if you turn it sideways and the pattern looks the same both directions, that would be non-directional, okay? So meaning it doesn't have a top or a bottom, okay? Oh, I love that magnet. <laughs> oh, let's see. Members only night for this month, Terry, is, hold on. I don't know where my phone is. It's the third Thursday of the month. So I believe that would mean tomorrow's the 11th, the 18th, third Thursday, one, two, three. Yep, next Thursday, the 18th, Terry, is episode seven of our members only stream. So it's always the third Thursday of the month. So the die from the last live, Kelly, um, I will explain this, but I have a remarkable tablet. It's one of those, it's a paper tablet. Um, so let me just show you an example. Uh, if I can unlock it. So it's like a, instead of using paper and pen, it is a like electric e-ink tablet. So I have this now because I am terrible with um, post-it notes and notebooks being like all over the house. <laughs> Customers will call and I'll write on a post-it note and then there's like post-it notes everywhere. So I'm trying to force myself to use one notebook and it's this electronic paper tablet. But I found that die sticking to the back of this. So just using this as an example. That's where it was. Cause on the back of this is a magnet and I had set this down in my work service cause I'm using it to write measurements and picked it up. So very similar to if you put your Stamparatus down or your Misty and that magnet picked up your die, it would have been the last place you looked. And all of a sudden I was like, ooh, I wonder if that's where it is. And sure enough, I literally found it like five minutes after the last stream. So, oh, good grief. All right, Cindy Dempsey. She's asking about the clear sleeves that I put my dies in. They are shop ticket holders by C-Line. Um, I love these. I love the stamp and storage ones, but my um, particularity is I didn't like that the tabs would all be out of order when I labeled them because I add new dies to my stash all the time and all the tabs would be out of order because I like to alphabetize them by catalog. So these are C-Line shop ticket holders. They are linked on my favorites page. Um, you can get a box of 50 for pretty darn cheap. Um, and then I use the five by seven Stampin' Storage magnet cards. Um, they're a little bit spendy, but I will say that I haven't had to replace magnet cards. They have lasted me for a long, long time. So I love the magnet cards and they fit perfectly in these C-Line shop ticket holders. I am also trialing the larger size of the C-Line shop ticket holders. See a little bit of a difference there. This is a much tighter fit. So it's a lot of work to get them in the pocket, but the vinyl stretches. So I'm not recommending these quite yet, but for dies that take up a lot more space, um, C-Line has a number of different sizes and I love the pricing and really, really good quality. I haven't had any quality issues with how these are heat sealed. The other thing I do is I trim these down. So I trim them down to seven and a quarter. They've got a little like hanging tab edge to the shop ticket holders. If you're familiar with what those look like, I just trim them down with my paper trimmer to seven and a quarter and it fits the dies perfectly. Ooh, this is a tough one. Of all the retired colors over your years as a demonstrator, is there one that you still miss terribly? No, I actually don't. Um, because the new colors always kind of take a piece of my heart. <laughs> 
So I get excited about new colors and I kind of forget about the old ones. So I haven't really had any of the old colors that I have missed. Um, one thing that was nice with the most recent color refresh that they did last year was a lot of my favorites came back. Like Misty Moonlight was one of my favorites that went away for a little while. That one's back. Um, and Berry Burst was one of them. So they did a pretty good job bringing some of the ones that I missed a little bit back. And now I'm so happy that they're part of the, the core colors. The dividers are not even, Linda. One side is just a little bit smaller. Let's see if I can show you that. I don't know if you can see that on the back side. Whoop, let's turn it that way. So backwards. This side's a little bit bigger than that side because the chapstick is narrower than the, um, the chap ice is narrower than the Tic Tacs. So that's why the, the measurements might have seemed a little bit wonky. Um, that's just because they're... I don't know if you can see like with the little finger notch, that divider is a little bit off center. And that's just because that divider is set up to fit uh, what goes inside it. The closest color to pale papaya since it's retiring. So pale papaya, Gail, I thought that retired two years ago or last year. Am I making that up? No, I think pale, pa yeah, pale papaya was gone a long time ago, but I will say that peach pie, hold on, let's see. Peach pie, which is new, might be, it's a little bit yellower, I think, but I think this one might be the closest to pale papaya. Still different, but close. You got the milk carton tic-tac box. Okay, Tom, that got taken care of for you. Let's see. I think I've addressed the shipping question, um, but just to reiterate, I think that um, Stampin' Up! does the best with the shipping prices based on uh, what we ship. So I'd rather the shipping be what it is than the prices to go up because that you know, the shipping costs is going to have to go somewhere. So again, I personally feel it as a small business owner, shipping catalogs for $7 is crazy to me <laughs> um, to get you a catalog, which I would love to give to everybody if I could. But, you know, shipping is, it's a necessary evil, unfortunately. If you don't use the divider, would two Hershey's Nuggets fit? Let's see. So it is, what did I say the width? I didn't tell you the width. It is on the project sheet. It's three quarters by one and three quarters by one and three eighths. So let's see. Do I have two Hershey's Nuggets out? Oh, here we go. No, two will not fit. So let me just show you what that looks like. Not quite. See if I flip it upside down, maybe? No, it's still too tight. Too tight. I have a number um, of, Judy, I have a number of uh, Hershey's Nuggets boxes of this similar style. So um, take a look at my blog. If you just search nugget in the little search bar, you'll see all the different Hershey's Nugget projects that I've done. Um, but I'm pretty sure I've got a couple that are this style. Um, there's one that's two that are long ways side by side. You might like that one. Let's see. No, this will not fit two Ferrero Rocher because those are really tall. This isn't technically a Ferrero, but it's the same, that um, Raffaello. Same size as a Ferrero Rocher, but yeah, it's, the box is too shallow. Let's see. Um, great question. So I obviously have to charge what the products cost, um, but with the In Color Club, what comes with that is you get a free gift um, on an average value of around $8 for free. Um, 
in the kit as well as a handmade card from me. I am the one that makes the cards and so I do include um, whatever in color you're getting for that month, you get a handmade, hand, hand stamped card in that color. And so it's just kind of a fun way to spread out your purchases for the in colors. You know, if, you, or if you're already planning on purchasing all of the in color products anyways, this kind of spaces it out over five months. I know some of my customers don't want to wait the five months. They'll just get them all at the front. My big um, avid enthusiast customers, um, but it's just a great way to kind of split it up. But there is a free gift that comes with it. And um, each month you get a free gift for each month of the five months. Um, so yeah, you don't necessarily save money, but you do get a free gift, if that makes sense. And a, and a hand stamped card that you can reuse. I don't, um, I don't write on the inside of it. You get an envelope with it, so you can pass that along. I think this is Zandy. I'm trying to recognize everybody's um, handles. So Zandy, I will be sending out catalogs tomorrow. I'll get those to the post office. They're all in the poly mailer bags. I just have to seal them up and stick the shipping labels on. So my goal is to get them to the post office tomorrow. When I print your shipping label, you'll get an email address with the tracking number so you can kind of keep your eye on your catalog. So great question. I think we, we addressed it. Um, but yeah, this lotion, the everyone nourishing lotion, I put it on literally right before I go live and it absorbs so quickly. It's not greasy and doesn't leave grease marks on the cardstock. I love it. So it's got pretty good ingredients too. All right. Donna, you are welcome to email Stampin' Up. So their email address is ds at stampinup.com. Let's see. I'm gonna skip that one. That one wasn't a question. This one. Okay, so Joan, with the catalogs, the um, Stampin' Up! has said if you haven't gotten it by April 25th, then you can email Demonstrator Sports. So I will tell you, I have not received my catalog from Stampin' Up! yet. Um, I've received the catalog boxes that I've ordered for my customers, but I haven't received the one from Stampin' Up! yet. So they're coming. Um, bulk mail is one of those tricky, um, tricky things because... Uh, they mailed them, I want to say it was about two weeks ago. Whenever we could see that annual catalog online for demonstrators, that's right when those, uh, the bulk mailing went out and they can take up to three weeks, sometimes longer. We're sort of at the mercy of our local post office. They all deliver bulk mail differently as I understand it. So, um, hang tight. If you don't have it by April 25th, be sure to reach out to Stampin' Up! Um, and they'll send you a replacement but I haven't seen mine yet. I keep checking the mailbox and still no catalog yet. Let's see. This will be fit in a normal card size sleeve. So the medium envelopes, it is the finished size is still four and a quarter by five and a half. So yay. Okay, so this question comes down to whatever state you're in, and I think you mean your question the opposite way. Why do we pay tax on shipping? So Georgia, for example, they charge tax on shipping. So you'll see an additional tax charge based on the shipping cost. It's all based on the states. My husband is a bit of a tax accountant too, right? It's all based on states if they charge tax on shipping, so. Oh, it is available, Susan. I searched for it. <laughs> I searched for it and it wasn't there. I didn't think to check the discontinued tab. Okay, well, it's 50% off if it's still available. I love this one. So I'll, just to remind you, if you love it, the love for you stamp set. It was 50% off on the last chance list. I swear I couldn't find it before live, but thank you, Susan, for saving me. <laughs> uh. Will the coffee Werther's fit in the treat box without the divider? Yes. Yes, question mark. I'm going to check because I got them right here. So the, the wrapper is a little bit wider, but the candy itself fits. So I think you could actually put one. I still haven't tried these yet. Have you tried one of these yet? I need to try one. You can actually fit two in there. I've got two stacked in there. 
And let's make sure the lid will close. It's a little finicky with the wrapper, but I don't know. The wrapper's gonna, do you see the wrapper sticking out on the sides? If you're strategic about tucking the wrappers in, you can get two in there. There we go, that's better, I tucked it in. So yeah, two Werther's. They're in there pretty good because the wrappers are a little bit wider than the box. The approximate size, in case you missed it when I did that, it's three inches in diameter. So the sleeve for the dies, in case you missed that, Yvette, is the <clears throat> C-Line Shop Ticket Holders. You can find that on my favorites page, thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. So the card does kind of a weird stand with the angle cut. So obviously with the magnets here, um, it's gonna wanna stay closed. But what happens is your card actually leans forward because the card is gonna wanna try to make that pair, um, level. So I tried standing it and it just is like this weird, like it's doing this. <laughs> it's kind of a weird, the card is bowing. That's what it's doing. So yeah, it doesn't really stand. Uh, but somebody could put that on like a display shelf the way it is. Um, but yeah, it doesn't stand on its own because it's just going to kind of lean forward. <laughs> uh, yes, I believe that's the case, Deborah. The Taco Fiesta sold out and discontinued, I believe. I saw that on the list um, yesterday. I do, Lori. Uh, I do get inspiration from places. So, for example, tonight's box was inspired by Liz Hightower, who's in the chat. She gave this to me as a swap, and it was inspired by a project I did a couple years ago. Um, and so then I just pixified it a little bit with some just minor adjustments to the measurements. Um, but yes, I do design all of my projects. We got this one. Two Hershey's Nuggets does not fit, but I've got a bunch of project projects Similar style for Hershey's Nuggets on my blog. So Susan, it depends. Um, Pixie Perks reward orders, I open a host code every two weeks and it all depends on how often you guys are redeeming Pixie Perks rewards. So if I still have, I save all of my stampin' rewards um, that I accumulate through the month for my customers. Um, and so that's where the Pixie Perks rewards come from. So I try to do it about every two weeks, but it all depends on how many Pixie Perks redemptions I have in the queue. Sometimes it's a little bit wider than that, um, but you can redeem at any time. And then I've got your, I'll, I'll add your Pixie Perks redemption to the next order that I place. So six by six paper. I put that into, um, these are Avery L stamp and die pockets. And I trim, this one's trimmed a little bit shorter than I normally trim them, but I usually trim them down to six and three quarters. The pockets themselves, it's just a really nice um, thickness of, what is that, poly? I don't know what that is, it's plastic. Um, but they hold up really, really well, and they're six and three quarters by nine and three quarters, and I trim them down to six and three quarters. So they're basically six and three quarters square, but I keep all of my six by six full sheets in there as well as scraps in the front, and you can also find that on my favorites page as well. Let's see. Ooh, I don't have a favorite yet. I have to see them all. That's one of the things I love about doing the product shares is I get to see the paper up close and personal as I um, kind of sort through it and unwrap it and get it ready to cut. So TBD on that. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I love the one with all the new in colors. I'm just going to flip through it really fast just so you have an idea. The Unbounded Beauty is just so, so pretty. Just showing you the tiniest little sneak peek. But I love this one because it showcases all the in colors together. Yes, you can always view the catalog online. It will be available to download the digital version on May 1st. So Stampin' Up, yeah, it's a, uh, let's see. 
when they share it when the catalog goes live, it's not specifically a PDF. It's in like an online, I think it's they use Issue, I-S-S-U, but I think there's an option on Issue to download the PDF. So yeah, you can do that. So Marcy, I, as long as you put a Q, I do typically answer questions. It's, I remember answering your question, so it's possible you missed my answer, um, but I can go back and look through episode 324's chat and I can shoot you an email or sh feel free to email me at support at thepaperpixie.com and I can answer your question for you. But I'm pretty sure I answered your question last time. Let's see. So there's not a, there's not a whole lot of, um, whoops, that's the one that I just put the word there's in. <laughs> there's not a whole lot of wiggle room with the chap ice. So you would probably just have to adjust the measurements, but see how they're both the Tic Tacs, Tic Tacs and chap ice are kind of right at the top. So one, what did I say that was? One and three eighths of an inch in height. So, but you can adjust that fairly easily. All right, I have reached the end of the questions. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight um, for episode 325. Let's see, what was I going to say? <laughs> Last chance list, make sure to check that out. There are items discounted up to 60% off, like lots of items, um, 50 to 60% off items. There are 72 of them and then 52 products that are 40% off and then there's some like 10 to 30% off as well. So be sure you're checking those out. Um, everything is while supplies last up until April 30th when everything retires May 1st. Um, but it's a great time to grab um, products at a discount or stuff that's been on your wish list, but you haven't yet added it to an order. So t check out the last chance list. That's linked in the description. Also the links to my product shares and in color club, the link to the project sheet for the 3d project is there as well. Uh, the card measurements and everything will post the blog. The plan is for Friday and I think that's it. Stampin blends labels. If you haven't already purchased those again, that's an $8 digital download just to show you what that looks like. It's just the little ends that tell you whether it's light or dark. Um, and if you've already purchased those for me, you should have gotten my update email on March 29th. If not, check your spam folder. It may have skipped your inbox. You can always reach out to me at support at thepaperpixie.com. I wanna give a special shout out to my Pixie patrons. This uh, credits at the end is for you. Thank you so much for your support. We've got our next stream on the 18th next Thursday. That's the members only stream. And I'll be back live with you for my regular show, uh, the Wednesday show at 8 p.m. Eastern time next Wednesday, which is April 17th for episode 326. I hope you guys have a wonderful and blessed weekend and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.